You're tuned in to the Daily BS. Do you believe it? Sports and culture combined into one. Michael on the drive across the lane. Turnaround shot. Got it. 63 for Jordan. Are you kidding me? He did what? The Daily BS begins. Bazinga. <laughs> right now. Hey, googly moogly. Hadouken. Hey, this promises to be fun. Can't wait. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, folks. Brian Snow is here and with you, and we're ready to get down to some daily BS business, sports and culture combined into one. You can hear a replay of this show one hour after its completion, and the premiere of the Daily BS podcast will also be available one hour after this show's completion. We are on all kinds of networks and stations all across the country. Well... Let me use my normal phrase in the region, across the nation and around the world. So if you're in your car on the drive home and you got me via your phone, via your laptop, via whatever, welcome to the Daily BS and let old Brian take you home with some great sports and culture talk. All right. Enough introductions. Let's get started. You know, I want to start off today's program by telling you a tale of perseverance. And this tale of perseverance involves a very dear friend in the industry. I had her on four years ago, and I've had her on recently when we discussed the death of one Kobe Bryant. But now let's get to some more positive times. The lovely Pamela Michelle joins me. How are you? I'm doing well, Brian. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Okay. I'm glad well, that we could be here talking a little bit more, you know, about <laughs> something happier. Even though it makes me happy to talk about Kobe and it always will, but it's yeah. just nice to, you know, have a little bit better of a circumstance. It, it's it's great to have you on under better circumstances. And one Thank of the you. one of the better circumstances is your show, the Pamela Michelle show. I <laughs> gave it a listen and it's now a guilty pleasure because it's a friend. Thank I, I I mean this from the heart. People have said it to me for the almost seven years I've had this show. I return the favor. This is you at its finest and not giving a you know what about what people think or say about your program. It's you. It's something you you had. To, it, it's something you had to do. You and I have talked about this. So I want you to yeah. tell the folks about the Pamela Michelle show. Let her rip. Okay, well, my new podcast, The Pamela Michelle Show, and I did that on purpose so I could hashtag PMF just because I wanted to. <laughs> it was, I there's caught always that, a message it to was, my madness. It was, there is always a it, message. Well, that is fabulous. When I, folks, when I caught, when I caught that hashtag, I must have laughed for about 20 minutes. <laughs> when I saw that hashtag, go on, tell the folks about it, your show. It's by design. It's by design to make people laugh. <laughs> I mean, uh, when I first started in this industry, I had a programming director tell me what a great personality I am. And it pissed me off. I was so offended. I was like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Like, I want to be that girl. Like, I want to be, like, respected and thought of in the top percentile of people who are knowledgeable about fantasy football and who know their, sh- you know, their shit about baseball. Right. Like, I want to, like, be respected and think of, like, being a serious sportscaster. And I, I don't want somebody to be like, wow, you have a great personality. Yeah. That's what, you know what I mean? It's like... It was offensive to me, and I worked so hard, and I became that girl. Like I became the fantasy football girl. People wanted to interview me about fantasy football. People sought out my advice, and I beat everybody in Vegas. I beat the Sirius XM fantasy football champion. I beat Vegas bookies. I made the boys look foolish and stupid. I have Good. nothing left to prove. I have nothing left to prove in that realm. I know I am one of the best. Everybody can say, hey, this is how I do it, whatever. I know my way works, and it's been proven with results. Championships and, you know, like I said, 
you can't get any better than beating people in Vegas who think they know everything and yep. making them look foolish when they leave Ezekiel Elliott in his rookie year just there for you to take. Yep. I, I mean, how can you just pass that up? Just there for you to take. How can you pass up <laughs> you Ezekiel know. Elliott? Okay. No, you, you, just, you just couldn't. I mean, I got super lucky. I had the last pick, and for some reason, like, all of these guys were just overlooking everything, overlooking everything, all laughing at me. You have last pick. Ha, 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 ha. And we were doing a snake draft. So I was like, okay, I got last pick, but I get two picks in a row. <laughs> exactly. Take who, you, take who you want to take. And the way I constructed my roster, everybody laughed at me. I took two quarterbacks who actually had the same bye week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't pay a lot of attention to bye weeks or anything like that. I construct my team to how I want it. And point being of it all, it was a 12 person league from these, you know, the creme de la creme in Las Vegas. And they left me last pick with Ezekiel Elliott and David Johnson. <laughs> I mean, that's a no brainer. So, that's a no brainer. That's what I did. It was Ezekiel Elliott's rookie year, yep. and David Johnson actually really wasn't hurt that year. He had a great year. The same right. year, Zeke broke out and had this phenomenal monster year, and I took them back-to-back, back. and all the boys <laughs> laughed at me. And the week, before I go back to talking about my show, the week that both of my quarterbacks were on a bye, I think I had taken Roethlisberger and Philip Rivers maybe that year. I know I had Big Ben as one of my quarterbacks, definitely. <laughs> I want to say Philip Rivers might have been my other one, but they were both on a bye. And, every, and the thing is about this league is you drafted who you drafted. There was no waiver wire. Wow. So I couldn't go to the waiver wire and pick somebody up. Your team was your team. So everybody's like, oh, my God, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. You don't have a quarterback. You don't have a quarterback. <laughs> I had Ezekiel Elliott and David Johnson. Sis didn't need a quarterback, okay? <laughs> like, I just didn't. I, I won it. that week, and I won very big. So the point was, I was really offended. And now when I started thinking about what kind of podcast I wanted to come back with. Right now, we don't have sports, and it's a little bit difficult. You know, you can still talk sports, talk about different things. It's hard when there's nothing that's being played. True. And, you know, so I really can't talk a lot about that. I don't want to do something I've already talked about before. I wanted to do something different that interested me. I got the best advice from somebody I used to work with, and he told me, do the show you want and be fearless about it. I know everybody's not going to love my show. I've gotten quite a bit of critique about my show saying, hey, you know what? I think you should take calls. You know what? I think you should do this. I don't get where you're going with this. It's not for everybody to get. It's supposed to be something for you to just put on, listen to, and laugh. That's what I wanted to do. I like making people laugh. I'm not trying to say I'm a comedian, but I do like making people laugh. And I came up with this concept of if people really knew what girls talk about, Sometimes guys would be like, wow, that's what you think. <laughs> and I know that there is, I know that there are podcasts that kind of already do that kind of stuff, but I feel like mine is a little bit different because it's not like I'm taking it exactly from that point of view. Right. The Pamela Michelle show is, I actually started off with something very serious, which was the topic of mental health. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for those of, But for people who know me, they know that I had a really hard time not that long ago where I was in a really dark place. Right. And, you know, I would just lay in bed. I would cry before my feet even hit the floor. I didn't want to get up. I just didn't know how I was going to fake going through my day. Right. Because the worst thing when you're unhappy is somebody says, hey, is everything Okay. Because even that little phrase can force you to just bust out into tears. Yes. I would muster up the strength to 
put my feet on the floor and pretend that I was in a good mood and I would smile and go about my day when I was dying inside. I would go to bed and pray. If there is a God, please don't let me wake up tomorrow. Like, I just want the pain to stop. I want the hurting to stop. I just can't do this anymore. I just can't. And it was really hard for me to communicate that to people. And I had people that loved me that wanted to help me, and they didn't know how because I didn't know how to communicate, hey, I'm not all right. Like, there's things that are going on in my head that I can't even begin to understand. You know, I was driving my car and I pulled over on the side of the road and I just started to just break down and cry because all I wanted to do was put my foot so far on the gas and then just drive into a building. And then I thought, oh my God, not what if I die, but what if I live? What if it doesn't work? And those were some of the things I was thinking about. You know, I would just not answer phone calls. I didn't want to do anything. I just was in this horrific, dark place. I finally got help. I've been going to therapy, doing a lot of things to work on me. And in a way, this podcast is sort of my therapy in a way. I talk about things that are, you know, important to me or things, random things that I think about. I came up with this whole bad girl Bible and the bad girl Bible. A lot of people asked me, hey, what's that? Is that like just a complete sex guide? No, not really. <laughs> it's not. It's not a complete sex guide. But <laughs> what it is the equivalent to <laughs> is the bro code. <laughs> so that's sort of what the bad girl Bible is. Is the bad girl Bible is the equivalent to the mythical bro code. Yes. And you know, I had a you know, I had a listener ask me, so how many rules are there? <laughs> I don't know yet <laughs> because I am still kind of making them up as I go along. Absolutely. If there's going to be if there's going to be ten rules, then you know there's going to be ten rules. I have two rules right now. The first one is never, ever, never, ever beg. The second is be the girl everybody wants, but not the girl everybody's had. <laughs> That is fabulous. Now you wonder why I love the sh- you wonder why I love the show because I love to laugh and my wife makes me laugh on a daily basis. I love <laughs> laughter. I absolutely love laughter. And since and exactly, it's the best medicine, it, and that's also why is. when I introduced like the logo for my show is this blonde that looks very iconically like Marilyn Monroe, mm-hmm. and the the whole slogan of it is "When Good Girls Go Bad." <laughs> that so, is, <laughs> that's like, just one of the reasons I had to have you back on the show in better times. It's so good, it's yeah. so wonderful to hear you laugh. Because the first time I had you on, we we laughed and we laughed the entire time yeah. we were in we were in conversation. One of my favorite yeah. comedians, when I and I too can share your story about being in a very dark place, and it wasn't that long ago for me. And I'll piggyback on that after the break. But one of my favorite comedians is George Carlin, and right. I've listened to a ton of George Carlin. When I was in a mental hospital three years ago, you know, anyone who knows me or Mm -hmm. knows of me, which you do, you know, my favorite comedian is George Carlin. And one of my favorite routines by George is flying on an airplane. And my mom and my dad were the first ones I repeated this routine to. And y'all gonna have to forgive me because I'm just going to say it the way he said it. My favorite line in his routine of flying on an airplane 
About this time, someone's telling you to get on the plane. Get on the plane. Get on the plane. I say, fuck you. I'm getting in the plane. (laughs) (laughs) And I did I did that for my wife when we went on a trip last year. Again, folks, forgive me. This is the first hour and we're kicking this off the right way with some laughter while this Mm -hmm. while this pandemic goes on and help us get through this pandemic. Man, that has been one of my lean on lines when I go through go through a dark time but the best part about it i'm getting dressed to take my wife to work one day and i said it in the shower didn't realize it and i came out and i repeated it and when i got to that line my wife said it to me and i fell out laughing I've fallen. I have. I fell out laughing. It's that one or a Bugs Bunny cartoon or something. So, folks, our point is laughter will get you through this. I had to have this lady on the show to talk about hashtag PMS. Oh, Lord, I'm going to laugh all day long now because when I first saw it, I started cracking up. And I'm going to make sure that it is a well recommended podcast for folks that really uh, get into laughter and want to find out a story about perseverance i will continue to tell your story and i will definitely support your podcast this is pamela michelle a very dear friend of mine the host of the pamela michelle show and yes you heard the hashtag correctly hashtag pms and if that don't make you laugh then you don't have a pulse and you don't have a soul. Come on, y'all. Give this give this show a listen. I really, really recommend it. And I truly thank you for for coming on and sharing your story and sharing your podcast with us. Well, I appreciate it. And I really hope everybody likes it. I mean, I'm doing it for me, selfishly. It's a self-serving type of thing that I really hope everybody loves. I love getting the feedback. I always put things on Facebook and Twitter. The last I'm actually doing right now is, you know, fetishes and what are deal breakers. So, I mean, this is this is not your average podcast, folks. I mean, I, I know that not everybody's going to love it. I know that some people that I've worked with really don't get it, and it's just not for them, and it's okay. Right. It's okay because I want to talk about deal breakers and fetishes. I mean, my last podcast was a good friend of mine who's a comedian, Marie Connor. Yes. We did, it was called Spilling the Tea, and I went through mm-hmm. my Twitter DMs, and I made a game <laughs> show, and I made I read things that, like, dudes send me, and I asked her, I was like, okay, so the internet is a cesspool. Where do you think this came from? Do you think it came from Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or a dating site? <laughs> <laughs> you, I could, you know what? The next time you do that, let me know. Because I, totally I, I could totally turn that into a Jeopardy setup. And just right, throw, exactly. throw it out. That's the I whole could, point. It was designed with a there. very like game show yep. type motif. You let so me know. You let me know the next time you do that. Doing, we'll definitely be doing another spill the tea at some point. I gotta let these creepy DMs build up. <laughs> I get them on the daily. I know I you do. do. I get them on the daily. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> you, when they build, when they build up, you let me know when you do that. I will come in. You got it. I will virtually come in with a tuxedo on and put the spotlight on, and I will have so much fun with it. I would love to do that segment with y'all. I would love to do it. No problem. Absolutely. Oh, man. Pamela Michelle giving y'all a laugh to start the day. Thanks a lot, my dear. I totally appreciate the time. Thank you, Brian. Have a great day. I'm going to piggyback on what she went through later on in the program, but I'm going to have some more laughs back in a flash.
You're tuned in to the Daily BS. Sports and culture combined into one. Now, folks, there's there are a lot of people that I bring on the show and they're able to talk about their teams. This guy ain't. My good friend Cravante Hurd has jumped on with me, and I promise I didn't do this to make you depressed or upset, my friend. <laughs> 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 oh man you know how to press my buttons man you know how to press them man how long have we been friends now four or five years <laughs> I, I, I lost count <laughs> now you got all excited all through instagram and i remember this and i was so happy for you the night the capitals won the stanley cup i didn't think you could scream that loud <laughs> nah, I, I didn't think so either. Because honestly, I didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh, I didn't man. think it was going to happen, man. One of the proud members of the Flex Zone, Cravante, heard joining me. Now, I, I got to ask, how crazy did you go when the Nationals won it all? Um, pretty crazy. <laughs> um, I, I, I actually, I went pretty crazy. Um, and I went crazy because. Uh, well, since you've been since you've known me, um, there's I, I've always talked about there being some type of uh, dark cloud, yep. um, being over um, the nation's capital yep. as far as sports is related. Because I mean, if you look at all of our teams, as, except like as of late, I mean, I'm talking about when we first met each other, right. like when we first th- started conversing about sports. Yep. At the time, all of our teams were struggling. From hockey, I think hockey was doing the best at the time. Um, basketball was kind of up and down. Football was in the dirt, and <laughs> baseball was good. Baseball was good, but it's just that we just couldn't get over the hump. Mm-hmm. But that's what made the Nationals win so great and so like heartfelt. Like almost brought me to tears because the Nationals have been good for quite some time, but it's just that. I felt like every time we ran to the Dodgers or every time we <laughs> ran into whoever our first opponent was, yeah. we would lose. But we were always the favorite because of our um, cause of, of our uh, bullpen. And I, so, um, at, first of all, we beat the Dodgers. Let me tell you, you, you understand? I was you excited off the back. I'm like, we I finally got over the hump. I was so excited. I was at work. Before The pitch before Kendrick lifted the Grand Slam, I saw they had tied it at three. I heard Juan Soto's home run thanks to Charlie Slows and Dave Jagler because I have that uh-huh. I have that app on my phone WJFK which is the chief th- the uh, flagship station of the Nationals. Mm-hmm. I had my earpiece Wait. in illegally, of course, and I <laughs> was listening to Charlie and Dave take us through the ninth inning and then get to the tenth inning, and Dave was on the call, and I heard him get excited when Kendrick drove that one strike pitch over center field and i could i was working in a hospital so i couldn't scream like i wanted to oh i couldn't scream i had to do something i had to do it fast so i went outside and went into my car and let loose for a good 10 minutes Because man, yeah, man, I'm a felt, I'm a White Sox fan. I'm from Chicago, but I'm also a big fan of the Nats. I've been a big fan absolutely. of the Nats for a while. When I screamed in my car, a couple of my coworkers, I kid you not, came outside and they saw my car bouncing, and they thought <laughs> something was going. On. They 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 thought something was going on. So unbeknownst to me, security was alerted, and so was my boss. Get out of town, man. <laughs> Get out of town, man. When my boss came to my car, he saw me, you know, pumping my fist and he told everybody, he's okay, everybody go back in. He was about to leave. And I looked at my I looked at my phone and said, I better get back I better get back inside. I got back inside and he immediately yanked me into the office. He said, I need to see you in my office now and I'm like, ah. Oh, Damn, I got busted. I came in the office, <laughs> closed the door, and he looked at me, and he had this big grin on his face. 
and he said, you must be listening to a baseball game. I said, I just heard the Nationals beat the Dodgers. He said, thank God, go back to work. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. My God, my God, my God. Now, I hate picking on this guy because he's one of my best friends, folks, but what are y'all going to do about John Wall? Hey, uh, you, you always again. You always no. I feel like you, I feel like you do these things on purpose. Um, so, Whatever um, do you mean? What are we going to do with John Wall? Huh? What are John Wall gonna... hasn't he hasn't played in about two going on three years. It seems like, mm-hmm. and um, I we 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 don't know if the guy is really healthy. <laughs> so once he gets back to camp and unfortunately with with all the goofiness that's going on in the world and this uh this virus that's going around we won't know anytime soon <laughs> which kind of makes the which kind of makes all this worse and another thing that makes it worse is that bradley bill is playing out of his mind yep so and it's bradley like, bill i think is out of there i hate to I, say I, it. I think unfortunately unfortunately i think he's out of there too because as soon as he hit the open market He's yep. gonna have suitors. Oh yeah, he's gonna have a lot of suitors, and I don't know if we'll. I don't know if our front office will want to put more money, put more money into him when John Wall's sitting over here, and we're not sure what's going on with him. Right. It's really, it's, it's really, we're in like one of the worst positions <laughs> as an uh, organization <laughs> in basketball. It's, Let, it's terrible. Let's talk some more NBA. Cravante Hurd joining me. And I'm going to say this team, this team's name the correct way. So people are going to have to forgive me for being old school, but the bullets are in deep trouble. The Washington Wizards, a.k.a. the Washington Bullets, are in deep trouble because you got John Wall sitting out for an who knows length of time. Bradley Beal right. is playing out of his mind and he's out of there. You got rid of Saransky, who's now with the Bulls, and the Bulls just made a couple of changes in their front office, and they're getting ready to be on the rise. What do y'all do? He got fired on his day off. He got fired on his day off. He got fired on his day off. (laughs) He got fired on his day off. I I, I guess, and I talked about this yesterday on the program, I guess the fans said enough is enough. All right? I guess the fans said enough is enough. But... What do you do in Washington? What are y'all gonna do? Ah, man, man, man. Um, that's a good question, man. I wish, I wish I knew. Um, the only thing we can do is, um, well, God damn, this is this is really tough because it's like the the perfect storm for us, perfect situation for us was that John Wall and Bradley Bill would be on the same page on the court at the same time performing mm-hmm. outstanding and we would have arguably uh a, we would have a formidable backcourt but when one's injured and it's funny because john wall's playing well bradley bill was injured now mm-hmm. it's now it's my like reverse but bradley bill's playing out but he's playing out of his mind so unfortunately we're gonna have to we're gonna become uh hmm. we're gonna become one of those teams that's gonna sink for a couple years because i know they're gonna play this wrong whatever they do it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna, we're gonna end up on the short end of the stick because we're gonna end up losing Bradley Bill, mm-hmm. and we're gonna have John Wall, but we're not gonna know what we're gonna have with John Wall. I, I know Bradley Bill's out the door. Yeah, Bill's out of there. We gotta see. We we want to hit the draft. We we're gonna have to hit the draft. The draft is the best is our best is our best option at this point. Yeah. Now and I, you know and you know I don't care for that coach either. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> nah, that's, nah. I was like, man, that's I, obvious. I, I, I don't know. He he doesn't bring them to the next level. He doesn't get them nope. to that next next level. He, nope. He's not that guy. He really isn't. Now I got another question for you. I put a rumor out there that there would oh, be not one but two big men available for a certain team in San Francisco, California, that would restart their dynasty. And people think I'm crazy when I put these two names out there. So I want to get your thoughts on this. The two names I put out there, Giannis Antetokounmpo and Carl Anthony Towns. Yep. You're crazy. (laughs) 
Yep, you're crazy. I don't know if that's what you want to hear, but yep, you're crazy. Why do you think I'm crazy Um, when I say that? Why do you think I'm crazy when Carl Anthony Towns wants out of Minnesota and the Bucks would probably get beaten by Toronto and Giannis wants out of Milwaukee? Why am I crazy? So, I don't think... um, I, I I think Milwaukee will do whatever it takes. Well, they should. That should not, not, not say, not say they will. Cause we don't know what they're going to do because I mean, hell, then they let go Kareem with Doja Ba or Lou Alcindor at the time. I rest but, my uh, case, but, but let's fast forward to the present. They haven't seen any success since that. Right. Yeah. So why would you go back? Why would you go back to doing what put you in the hole for decades? You yeah. finally got a generational talent. Yeah, true. Why would you, why would you, let him go. You need to do whatever you can to keep your superstars because that he's not just a great basketball player. He's box office. Folks come to see him. There's, there, there's a lot of avenues to this business we call basketball. And when you solid, when you satisfy, when a player satisfies, he check, when he checks off more boxes than one, there's more of a reason to keep them. True. So, I mean, they shouldn't. Now to the other guy, <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns may be out of Minnesota. I, I agree with you. He may be out of Minnesota. He may be about through with him. Hell, I think Minnesota, Minnesota may be blowing up their team a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you. So letting Carl Anthony Towns go, and if he get deficient around that market, California would look real sexy at the time. And you know, Anytime. <laughs> and, and, and you know that management in Golden State are licking their chops. To go after him. They're looking at chops to go after him because the Warriors have a top three pick in their back pocket. Let's just call it the way we see it. They have a top three pick in their back pocket unless a ping pong ball decides to fall through the floor, come back through the ceiling and tap an executive on the head again, which I don't see happening. The Warriors have a top three pick in their back pocket. Who's to say they won't make a trade? for Carl Anthony Towns and a couple of second round picks rebuild their draft capital and rebuild their bench and do the same thing that they did four years ago when Kevin Durant surprised everybody. Sure. Sure. I can, I can see that. And, and I did, I meant you're crazy. This, the Greek freak part, because with the goofiness that's going on with Carl Anthony Towns and the Minnesota uh, front or the Minnesota team, is like it, 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 it's getting to a head. It, 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 it's really getting to a head. Like it's been in a head. It's has, been in a head for two, mismanaging. It's been in a head for two it, years. And Jimmy Butler yeah, is I'm part saying. of Minnesota, that problem. Minnesota has been a team. Minnesota has been a team that has horribly mismanaged players and known for it. Kevin so Garnett, Carl hello. Towns leaving. <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns leaving is not far fetched at all. And what, if he leaves, now it depends on how he leaves. If he leaves via free agency, that's one thing. But if he if it's via trade, I I don't think Minnesota would do deals with the Warriors. Oh no, I don't think people so. thought the same well, thing at so, Oklahoma but, City four years I ago. Know, you know, I, I, Oklahoma is one of those cities I didn't think needed deserved the team. So you know, whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Finally, finally Give me somebody Seattle that ag- back. Give me Seattle back. <laughs> finally, somebody that agrees with me. Can we please? And we'll, let's just go to that point next. Can we please bring back the Seattle SuperSonics? What, what, I'm saying, man. What the what the hell's in Oklahoma besides the Sooners? It, nothing. The, the Thunder. <laughs> the Thunder now. That's it. Did, they did y'all? The only thing. Oh, like, who this, who okayed that? Like who okayed? Yeah, you know what? Oklahoma City. I like it. Who okayed that? What board okayed this? This has been going, that was going on for three years. Because remember, Hurricane Katrina displaced New Orleans. Right. Okay? And Clay Bennett saw his opportunity because for a while, like Kansas City and Omaha shared the Kings, New Orleans and Oklahoma City shared the Hornets. Don't ask me how Oklahoma City fully got in play. I don't know. I really don't know. But be that as it may, be that as it may, it happened. And 2008 saw the end of an era 
with the Seattle Supersonics, which is why I have about 100 Seattle Supersonic games on my jump drive, but that's another story. <laughs> I cannot, and I said this on your program, I can't stand the Oklahoma City Thunder, okay? I cannot I and can't. will this, not this, 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 stand this, 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 OKC. Be, be, be snow. Listen, I hate Oklahoma City now. When they first, when they first, first came out, they were very, very exciting. I mean, young team, great players, and they had a great nucleus that could been that if they could have kept them together, could have been a force to be reckoned with in the yeah. West and the NBA as a whole. Give you that. But because of the mismanagement of their front staff, have we heard that before? That, that for their front office, <laughs> it, it, it completely, completely dismantled. At, like in the course of like two to three years, that team has been destroyed. Mm-hmm. Like completely destroyed, and that's when I was like, "See, that's why. That's why. That's why y'all can't have nice things. That's why y'all can't have nice things." And that, that's that's how I feel about that. But you know I what mean, really destroyed once, OKC? Once James Harden. You know what really destroyed OKC? And it wasn't even James Harden leaving. James Harden playing that on his own. You know what destroyed well, yes, Oklahoma absolutely. City? Losing to that? Golden State after being up three one. It killed him. They haven't been the same yeah, yeah. since. But you know what? I think I think that was the nail in the coffin. I think that might have been like the last strike. I think the first one started when uh, around the James Harden uh, thing. That was probably like the mm-hmm. first one. But that was definitely the last one. That was the nail in the coffin. Like, yeah, yeah we'll yeah. never be able to overcome that. That was that was the last that, straw. It's kind of like it's kind of like the Seahawks <laughs> and the Patriots <laughs> in that Super Bowl. The Malcolm Butler. Never, <laughs> have you noticed that the only that it's only like two players from that Super Bowl team that's still on the team, and one of them is Russell Wilson. Exactly, and one guy and one guy's um, going to defense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I the think, same. I think, it's I think the same thing. Two, two, or, two or three guys, something like that. And, and as but, far yeah, as it's the not, Seattle Seahawks go this year, folks, I hate to say this to my fans in the Pacific Northwest, don't expect anything big, okay? Because until you unseat the 49ers, it's over. All right? And, and I'm putting and, and I'm putting this thing. out there. I'm putting this out there too. Go ahead and say. I think you I think I know what you're about to say. Go ahead. Nobody's beating San Francisco for a while. Mm. Nobody's beating I, San okay, Francisco so, for a while. Okay, so I wanted to say this. Arizona low key is coming. Arizona is coming. You mean the same? <laughs> like you mean the same Arizona that lost in heartbreaking fashion twice to Jimmy Garoppolo? I mean, I love Listen. I love the fact that they traded for DeAndre Hawk, DeAndre Hopkins. Steel, Hopkins. steel. It's a steel. steel. It's an it's an absolute steel. steel. But steel. here is the problem, and it's going to be a problem until they decide to fix it. They got the wrong man coaching them. I I can't <laughs> I, I not okay okay so, so so let me say this I didn't think he was qualified for that job I when when he first got it I didn't think he was quite qualified to be a head coach but I think he's teamed up he he's in the perfect situation to succeed because he's teamed up with Kyler Murray so I'll give you that them together. They could build a really, really great office, young, fast, college-like offense, but with a pro with a pro twist. But um, you, they're, t- they're two sides they, to they, the if ball. If they could be patient, the, the if they could be patient, they've been patient in, in Arizona. The they've been patient in Arizona since Ben Roethlisberger threw a Super Bowl-winning touchdown that shouldn't have counted. They've been patient. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Obviously, they're not because look at Josh Rosen. Look at Josh Rosen. They, they, they weren't that patient. I, I'm saying on the coaching side of the game, yeah. if they're going to be patient because Kyler Murray, I don't know if he's necessarily one of those quarterbacks where you can put him with anybody and he'll succeed. I think if he's with a young, a young and um, a young and innovative coach, I think that's where he's going to succeed. He he would have had to be with like a a Sean McVay or yeah. Kyle Shanahan, one of those type of you offensive know minds to thrive. Hey, you know something, Kyler Murray and Kyle Shanahan. Wow, imagine those two yeah, bonds like, fitting together. But but you see, the Forty ers already have their quarterback of the future. 
a couple of different mm-hmm. plays, and they have six Super Bowls. And I will put this out there. They're going to make a couple of different plays, and they will have their sixth Super Bowl, but I'll spill that tea later on in the year. But I, I, understand where you, I understand where you're going. While we're talking about the NFC West, it's going to be between the Cardinals and the 49ers. The Rams are done. The Seahawks are – no, 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 change that. The Seahawks are done. The Rams are worse. Listen, the Rams did this, did this mess to themselves. They did this they to themselves mortgaged, a they, couple years ago. The mor- they mortgaged the future for a player that didn't give them much. And now Todd Gurley is gone. Brandon Cooks is gone. J- they mortgaged the future. And I hate saying this. And you and I lo- know a lot of Rams fans. We have a lot of friends in common. And you know I also speak the truth when the tea gets knocked over. I don't spill it. I knock the son bitch over, okay? Here's the tea uh-huh. I'm going to spill, and it goes like this. They mortgage the future on a quarterback that hasn't done a doggone thing since the NFC Championship game. They got lucky in New Orleans. Mm. And that, that's tough because I I felt like Jared Goff was – not as good as he portrayed. I thought the Rams defense was really, really, really good. And he had some really good weapons around him. But I felt like Jared Goff, he wasn't that guy to put them over the top. He was more so down for the ride, yeah. if anything. Yeah. And, and he, you he, saw he, it in he's the not playoffs. The guy, like, like, see, like, see, uh, I, I, I know you feel a certain way about the Seahawks, but I feel like if you put Russell Wilson there, I think Russell Wilson would have put them over the top. Wrong. Wrong. I think he would have put him over the top. Wrong. I think so. I don't. Jared Goff, Jared Goff no. Russell no, Wilson, yes. Yeah. I don't trust. Look, Russell Wilson is a Seahawk, and he'll be a Seahawk for life, and thank God for that. Put him with the Rams, and it's even worse. Because the management's no, 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 not in I, place. I mean, I mean, at the time. I mean, at the time okay. when the Rams were at their height. Okay. Not now. Okay. Not now. Not now. Can't nobody help no. the Rams. Can't nobody help the Rams. No. <laughs> can't nobody help the Rams now. The Rams are going to be I'm under talking about like when Jared Goff. Yeah. I'm talking about when they was like in NFC Championships and they went to the Super Bowl. I was like, I think Russell Wilson would have got them in that Super Bowl. Would have got them that Super Bowl. Mm. Jared Goff, he's not quite there yet. And honestly, I don't think he'll ever be. And he's with Sean McVay. Yeah. Yeah. Jared Goff is not that guy. Todd Gurley not was not that, that guy. Todd Gurley was not that guy. Because if Todd Gurley was that guy, he'd have found a way to play, not only play, but beat San Francisco in their house. And the 49ers held them to seven points in Los Angeles. And I keep referencing the 49ers because A, that they're defending NFC champions, and B, they got one hell of a defense. Yes. Yes. Even though they let a, a nice long piece go, but they Look, do still have a very formidable defense. Solomon Thomas is going to step in great for DeForest Buckner. I hope so. I that hope was so. a that was I a money so. move. That was absolutely a money move because the 49ers are busy uh, stacking up their draft capital like they used to do when they ruled the '80s. But I got a fellow mm-hmm. out of South Carolina that could easily step in when I did my mock draft. And yes, for the first time in my career, in my sports talk career, I did a mock draft. And at 13, I gave the 49ers. Oh, man, B-Stone, you should have called me, man. I like doing mock drafts. <laughs> we'll do, you know what we'll do before the, before the actual draft, you and I will do one. Okay. The hey, person I have hey, mocked for the 49ers is a fellow named Javon Kinlaw out of South Carolina. I heard. Yep, I'm very familiar. These linemen. Yep, I, I'm very familiar. I am just. He's saying, so, um, they're saying like he might. He's he's might right right behind Chase. He's behind Chase Young. Yep. Yep. He is a playmaker. Oh, Javon Kin. Pair Javon Kinlaw. Put Javon Kinlaw on one side and Nick Bosa on the other side. Ooh. Ooh. Now, 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 would he be better at end or in the or interior? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's going to take, you know, it's you know, gonna take a couple Derek games. Brown. Derek Brown is out there as well. Right. It'll take a couple games. I, I, I still believe Ken Law goes to the 49ers, but it's going to take a couple games for them to find out where he really belongs. 
You knew where Bosa belongs. He's on the edge. You knew where DeForest Come Buckner belongs. Come he, on, he's on, he, he you was gotta on the know edge. that. You, well, yep. at the same time, they've lined Bosa up inside too, and he's Bosa just terrorized people. Nick Bosa oh, just yeah, terrorized yeah. In certain, people. In certain packages, in certain packages, right. he will give the interior offensive line hell. <laughs> hell. I mean, like, he scared he scared Aaron Rodgers. All right? How many times can you see a defensive lineman line up outside or inside, frighten the daylights out of Aaron Rodgers? For that matter, let's go down the list of the quarterbacks he terrorized last year. Drew Brees, oh God. Lamar Jackson, oh my Jared Goff. <laughs> we ain't got to say nothing about what he did to Jared Goff. We don't have to say anything about what he did to Russell Wilson in San Francisco or in Seattle. True. True. Yeah, he, he terrorized a lot. He, I mean, but that's that's what he does. That's the tree, that's the tree that he comes from. Yeah. <laughs> Joey and that, Bosa. That's, that's just what he does. <laughs> oh, he gets, here's he a thought. He gets to his spot. Yeah. He, he gets to his spot so fast. And it's yep. like linemen, no matter what, whether they're whether they're like faster linemen or like stronger linemen, he has a counter move for everything. Yep. And he gets to his spot, like where the quarterback, not necessarily where the quarterback is standing, he gets to like where the arm is. <laughs> yep. Like where the arm is about to release. And get that ball. Like, that's his thing. Here's a funny conversation. Here's which part is, of a funny conversation you and I had back in January. We had this off the air. I mean, everybody was so excited to see Kirk Cousins finally win a playoff game. Everybody in Minnesota was so excited, and everybody was so confident with Minnesota going to San Francisco. And then the 49er defense terrorized the Vikings into a three and out. And Jimmy Garoppolo mm-hmm. took the 49ers right downfield, eight plays, 61 yards, and it was 7 nothing. And you and I both said the same thing. This game is over. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> I tell you, Minnesota, Minnesota was the only, was probably the only city that was happy. Because first of all, they messed up my pool, my playoff pool. Because, um, <laughs> you picked New Orleans. Because uh, when they, 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 they went down there and beat uh, – they, they, they beat. They beat, they, beat, New, uh, they beat New Orleans. New Orleans. They beat New Orleans. They beat right? New Orleans. God damn. Yeah, <laughs> messed up my football pool. So they were. The, I think they were the only ones that was happy about that. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, and and, and I'm telling you, and you already know me. I, I, I'm very familiar with Kirk Cousins, mm-hmm. but I was like, because now they're playing against the 49ers. I was like, that's probably the worst thing that could have happened. <laughs> probably the worst thing. And, and, and you usually don't say that after a win. But after that one, I was like, this is not good. This is not going to be good. <laughs> this is not going to be good at all. I actually had not someone all. message me. You're going to love this. I actually had someone message me saying, watch out for Kirk Cousins. And they know I'm a 49er Shut fan. Up. I responded back to this person, are you bleeping kidding Shut me? Up. And he says. That's what you just said. Shut up. He posed another question behind it. And the question he posed behind it went like this and i kid you not i absolutely kid you not when i got this question what is the 49er defense going to do to kirk cousins beat him up was my simple response um <laughs> it's the, the worst thing the worst thing the worst thing that happened to kirk cousins is then when cook going down that was mm-hmm. the worst thing mhm because now cuz now it's all on you because at least Dalvin Cook, Dalvin, Dalvin Cook is very is um very good, mm-hmm. very good at the running back position. He could catch, he could do a multitude of things, and he could cover up a lot of things yep. offensively for Kirk Cousins too. Absolutely. But when he went down, when he went down, I was like, <laughs> "Oh, it's all of Kirk Cousins. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap." Because I know Kirk Cousins very well. He's not. He's not that guy who's going to take your team over the top. He's nope. not a playmaker. Nope. He's not that guy. Trust me, <laughs> as a Redskins fan, I know. He's not you that saw it guy. Up. You now, saw granted, it up close. <laughs> now, granted, now, granted, his time in D.C. was not all his fault. No. But nonetheless, I know what type of guy he is, and he's not that guy. <laughs> he's not that guy. He really and, and isn't. Matter of fact, I, I, I'll tell you, B-Snow, B-Snow, I'll tell you, 
I've adopted a new way of, of evaluating, trying to evaluate players and talent in general. That's what it is. Either you're that guy or you're not that guy. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to not be that guy. Mm-hmm. But when you're not that guy and you're getting guaranteed contract, something's up. You know, that made Paul Allen happy, the longtime voice of the Vikings. Uh, because mm-hmm. I heard some of his highlight calls after they played San Francisco, and I've never heard him that despondent except for any time Brett Favre went down. And I'm a big fan of Paul Allen. I am a huge fan of Paul Allen. Okay? I'm a huge fan of Paul mm-hmm. Allen as a play-by-play guy. But yep. I think he realized early that his Vikings were overmatched. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you had no choice. Listen, once Cook, once Cook was not able to go, that's it. Once Dalvin the, Cook, Dalvin Cook, if they were for them to win, Dalvin Cook would have had to have a have a hell of a game. He would have to have two hundred yards, and you ain't getting two hundred yards rushing against that nah, front four. Bro. That's not going. That, nah, you ain't getting. Two, you're not getting a hundred against that front four. That's what I'm saying. You ain't getting a hundred against that front four. Okay. And I, what was funny, the game was on the game was on a Saturday. My wife was sitting my wife and I were sitting watching watching it and she looked at me and she says, You know you're gonna get excited, right? Yes. And she just looked you're just sitting very still. We don't have the ball yet. And then the 49ers yeah. got the ball, marched it right into the end zone, and not only did I make my wife laugh, I frightened my dog. Aww. When I jumped, when I jumped up and said, when I said touchdown really loud, and I was running around the house, my wife was cracking up laughing. When I finally sit down, my dog hopped in my lap and just went to work, licking my face, going, "It's okay, you scared me, Daddy. I understand now." And every time I scored a touchdown, I got excited, and the dog was chasing me around the house. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> but it was it was fun. It's it's absolutely fun. One more thing. Absolutely. Proud Papa. How's that been going? Yeah. Uh it's different, man. Um unfortunately, um she's she's a, a distance away, so that's mm-hmm. the hard part. Yeah. Um I try my best to see her, you know, every day via FaceTime, but because of um the coronavirus is going on, yeah. it's not safe. It is is really not safe for yeah. her to be around too many people right now at her such a tender age like i said she just turned four four she's turned four months Mm -hmm. so you know that's uh that's a tough part but this is just another adjustment that it's kind of tough it's tough right now but i mean looking at her is just so much i feel so so much joy and she grows like i tell you every month she looks different yeah every month man yeah yeah yeah, I I I love it. I, I I love it. You're gonna get. We're gonna get through this, so you can see your baby girl. All right. I'm cheering you on. We're Absolutely. gonna make. We're gonna make sure we get through this pandemic, so fathers can be reunited with their children. I know it's, some distance has to be involved, but it's going to happen. Cravante Heard, one of the members of the Flex Zone, joining me. We just hopped all over the place, man. Thank you for the time. Yeah. I totally appreciate it. Listen, man, thank you for having me on, and we do this all the time, and it's great. I love it. <laughs> We're going to have to make this a weekly segment, man. We're just going to have to. Hey, man, listen, bro. Listen, man, just call me. You got it. <laughs> just call me. You got it, man. All right, a trivia question, and then on to hour two after this.
You're tuned in to the Daily BS. Sports and culture combined into one. There has been so much conversation with um, this coronavirus pandemic that's going on. And believe me, it is a pandemic. Because one of my best friends in journalism and in life had to go through it. He got through it, and he's here with me. This is Danny Thompson, and he joins me right now on the other side of the hotline. How are you, brother? Glad to have you. You know what? It's good to be back. Um, you know, the whole thing of the coronavirus is fun. Um, quote, unquote, hashtag, not really. Um, <laughs> but you know what? The good thing is that the results came back negative. Yes. Um, but the whole process, you know, it's a real process. Like when you see people talk about the, the no swabbing, yep. that's real. Yes. It's, it's the weirdest feeling in the world. People ask, have asked me about it. What does it feel like? I'm like, they're sticking a thing in your no, your nostril in both of them, mm-hmm. and they're digging for gold. <laughs> it's the weirdest yeah. 30, 20 seconds per nostril you'll ever feel. And then you have to wait for the results. It's like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's to me, it's a life changing experience because I can say I'm blessed. I didn't, I came back negative. But well, those 12 days in between, Brian, let me tell you, <laughs> stress is not even a word. But I get it's it. over and done with, great, through the grace of grace of God, we're having this conversation right now. And so I'm glad, I'm glad to be talking about something other than the coronavirus. Let's talk hoops. And does it not feel good to hug that little one a little bit tighter? Then that- Who are you telling? <laughs> from, from, <laughs> fa- from father to father. And I can tell you, the first time I hugged my little girl... Before you know, before I lost it to a breathing issue at age two, man, listen, you appreciate every little hug you get from your little ones. You know it as oh, well as I. Yeah, that, that 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 hug was a little bit tighter, and you know, and just met, met a little bit more. But you know, it makes you it makes you just realize how important every day is, and how you know, how how precious every twenty four hours you get each day is. So it's a beautiful story. Beautiful yes, thing. It is. Can't complain. So let's talk. Let's talk some hoops. And over the course of the weekend, there was a conference call with President Donald Trump. I I better address it correctly because you know how I feel and people will come after me. They will verbally Mm -hmm. come after me. You know this is what – look – You've you've Listen, read my post. I don't talk politics. Po- I don't even talk politics. You already know. Because <laughs> right? so the second you mention anything in politics, politics is like you know, you, you, no one is no one's wrong, no one's right. It's just basically everybody having a free for all. It's, it's, it's worse than Royal Rumble in WWE. It's, it's it's a the only thing about WWE is prescriptive. Me, wait 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 wait. Let me let let's go old school. It's a pre it's a prescripted WWF Royal Rumble, and I'm talking about with a title on the line. We're, I'm talking about the '92. Royal Rumble in Sacramento, where you had so many twists and turns that were written into it, and you know they were written into it. Come on, the, the, I was going to say I was going to say ninety one <laughs> Ric Flair in Orlando yeah. when, he, when he debuted. <laughs> I love it. I <laughs> love it. That's a separate conversation for another time. Let, the, the 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 conference call happened, and there was something that I said on one of my programs that people didn't believe will happen. That actually now is a possibility that the NBA season is going to be cut short. And when I say cut short, I mean canceled. It's, you know what, I mean, it's the doomsday scenario. It's the scenario nobody in the league wants to deal with. Now, they're trying, you know, Brian, you know, they're trying to find every way possible to, to finish this season somehow. And what hurt the NBA isn't what the NBA did or did not do is what happened with China and the CBA yes. over there. Because they, they were supposed to go back April 1st, now April 15th. Now they're back on hiatus again mm-hmm. because everybody, you know, it was under the impression that China had everything under control where those guys can go back. Right. Not playing with fans, but going to a point where they can go back and play. Yes. Now the issue is can the teams get enough tests administered to all the players around the league, keep them quarantined, and find – a location or two to keep them all together so they can finish the season somehow. Now there have been there, there's been one idea of sending everybody to Vegas mm-hmm. and play and finish the games there. Now mind you, Vegas is a perfect a perfect place. Yes, one there's a, there's a multitude of hotels within literally uh, microseconds of the Thomas and Mack Center and the Cox Pavilion. Yep, they host NBA Summer League. Yep. and to be honest with you. If you've been to Summer League, both buildings, Cox and Thomas A. Black, are connected by a hallway. Yeah. 
So, and that's the best part of Summer League is because you can go to games in both arenas, but you don't have to touch Las Vegas Sun in July. Yes. You can just literally go from one air conditioned building to another one. You can finish both the, both games. You can have games going on at the same time all day. You yep. can really play 12 games a day. Yeah. You know, in that format. Um, that's one possibility. The other possibility I said was to send the Western Conference out to Vegas and put the Eastern Conference to either Atlantic City. Now, I'm not sure about the venues for Atlantic City. Uh, Orlando was um, as a possibility. And the reason why Orlando is because, remember, Orlando is hosted Summer League. If you've been inside Amway Arena, their practice facility is inside of Amway Arena, of Amway Center. So it's in, it's literally like kind of like Thomas and Mac is connected by a hallway. You can literally play two games at the same time, one inside the big arena, of course, and you can play the other one inside the practice court. Mm-hmm. They talked about other other ways of doing this, and also Orlando, where the um, the arena is, there's about maybe seven to ten hotels, all literally within two blocks. Mm-hmm. So if you really want to do complete quarantine, that's a great that's a great idea. Yeah, meaning that you finish the regular season. Uh, basically, there'll be no more east west no more east west games in the situation play against each other. You'll probably get maybe four or five games, and then you start the playoffs. The real question is, you really can't do seven game playoffs. You can't do seven game series in this situation. It's too late in the year. Mm-hmm. And the due day scenario is, you know, we have April fifteenth, a huge day in the NBA, Brian, and that's yeah, the day is. where with the paychecks. Because the paychecks will determine what happens with the league. Yeah, I think the conference call is one thing, but the owners are asking the players to take fifty percent pay cuts on April first. The players are saying we want we'll give you twenty five percent, but that doesn't start till mid May. So that's the sixty four dollar doomsday question. Because the I don't know if the owners want to evict that doomsday clause, which basically says they'll have to pay the players because of something like this, mm-hmm. which means the players get nothing April fifteenth. Mm. The, the owners have a clause in the CBA they can they can trigger that. I don't know if that's in the best interest of the league with negotiations with the players' association. No, I don't know if the owners want to. You don't want to hit that doomsday button. I don't no. know if they want to do it. It's not good. It's not good for either, either party because the players get mad because they have a checks coming. Yeah, and it's, it's a like situation being, it's like being, that it's, it's a situation dangerous. that could go. It's a situation that could go either way. You don't want to trigger the doomsday yeah, and, button, but at the same time, there may not be much of a choice. I mean, you saw what happened in Utah on Friday with uh, Larry Miller. They laid off 80 employees. Yep. The Jazz laid off 80 employees yesterday. They furloughed. I mean, they let, they let them go for right now because guess what? Owners are losing money. There's nothing coming in. And this is going to be the norm. I mean, we saw, we saw Adam Silver and company take less money. You know, their major employees, they took pay cuts too. Yep. So this is real. This is becoming serious, you know. And you know, it's funny because you look at um, what was it uh, back in soccer uh, overseas? I think it was Real Madrid, uh, Lionel Messi, and Barcelona. Those guys they gave up their salaries to the club so that nobody lost their jobs. They right. they turned away money. Right. I think I think it was I think Messi or Ronaldo gave away eleven million dollars in guaranteed money just to make sure these guys, their, their staff, not just the people in, the, in, in, the, in what we call the clubhouse, but the workers, people who are employed don't lose their jobs because ownership's not making money. Right. So they, now I wonder would the NBA players do that for the people who are about to be fun? I mean, like I said, we just lost eight, the Jazz just lost 80 employees yesterday on Friday. I only, that's just the start of things. Yeah. If this thing drags on potentially into the summer, who knows what's going to happen? And this is, we don't know, Brian, like I said, and you, you mentioned it earlier on a couple of shows before the NBA does not want to trigger that doomsday button because the real ant question is if the NBA triggers that clause and says their season's done, what does that do for the NHL? What does that do for major, major league baseball? baseball? What does that do? What does that do for uh, MLS? Well, I mean, the P, you got, you got, you got, you know, that conference call today, Brian, or the prior conference call on Saturday, you had, Everybody on that conference call, with the exception of the NCAA, yep. every single major commissioner or person who runs a professional sports organization, Adam Silver, you had you Roger Goodell, Roger Goodell. you had, um, uh, you Rob, had Manfred, Manfred, Rob Manfred, Val Ackerman, yep. Vince McMahon, mm-hmm. you had everybody. everybody on this call today. A who's who, a, commission, a, lead, a who's who who leads a professional sports organization was on that conference call on Saturday. And the Francis, the Francis from the NASCAR. Yep. Everybody was involved in this. Yes. And so when I, when I saw Adam Schefter pull that tweet out today on Saturday, I was like, 
Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, I saw I'm that like, Saturday. It, it, it's and before it's getting we, serious, I'm like before we came on today, we posed that very same question. If the NBA, who was the first professional league to shut down, pulls the trigger and activates that doomsday clause, what does it do for the rest of professional sports? Part A and Part B, something a lot of people, save you and I, don't want to look at. How long does it stay activated? I, I think the thing is, I think if they pull the trigger on this season and just end it completely, I think we're back in October. Yeah. The only the only question is, see, the problem is the NBA didn't have a champion, and True. they don't want they've they've had a champion every single year, and I don't think no professionally does, doesn't want it not to have a champion. Right now, I think the best way to solve this problem, honestly, is you might want to go NCAA tournament style. Right. Everybody gets one game. One and done. You do the, the one and done. You give everybody two weeks. You get the you get the eight. You get the, the sixteen playoff teams. Yes. Two weeks. You give them. You let them get back into basketball shape. Mm-hmm. You let them do what they need to do. Yep. Even if you have to quarantine them to Vegas, I get it. Yeah. You basically even if, what you can do is you can play best two out of three if needed to. Mm-hmm. You do one game. You do one game for the opening round. Two out of three for everything else. This thing, this thing gets done. We we can finish summer league, yeah, in two weeks, and it's a sprint. We it, can get the playoff done. It would literally be a sprint to a championship. It would be nineteen ninety nine all over again. Although this would be even faster. much short. Yeah, it It'd would be, be shorter and faster. It'll be mic- listen. It'll be it'll be micro ball basically because you're bringing it's not, it's the not ideal, back. No, it's, it's, not it it's, not it's not ideal. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. But at the same time. If you want to be sure everybody's health stays in order because uh, it, it's slowly starting to bounce back, slowly, and I emphasize the word slowly, it's slowly starting to bounce back. But at the same time, everything is the social distancing, which is a stupid term to me because it's physical distancing. The social distancing is in effect until April 30th. So not only is the 15th of this month very important, but so is April 30th, because that's when the moratorium on social distancing is supposed to be lifted. OK, and being here in North Carolina, we're all waiting until May 18th when the high school sports season is supposed to resume. And I'm praying it resumes because I need my microphone right about now. But that's a different story. <laughs> but at the same time, but you know what I'm talking about. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> Do I need to yeah, say Yeah, every girl in the country knows that. Yeah. Every, every girl in the country knows this. <laughs> don't, don't worry. We all know. <laughs> but it, let's, let's uh, continue to be serious. But you can bring back the miniseries for every round except the opening round. Yeah, it's not an ideal situation. But at the same time, if you want to get maximum results in a short amount of time, bring the miniseries back for the conference semifinals, the conference finals, and then the world championship series. You get everything done. And the players get a chance to rest and extend their rest. You can schedule everything on time, including one of the biggest events aside of summer league, the NBA draft. And I'll be honest with you. I mean, you know, Brian, if we, if we literally, if the NBA pushed, I would say, to start the mini playoffs, like this idea, June June fifteenth, after Father's Day. Yes, we started after Father's Day. We could be done essentially by July first. Yes, yes. As long as they say you you, if this thing, we just put them in Vegas, and just like I said, you the first round games, you basically you get. I mean, you get enough time to get enough tests for the sixteen teams in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I understand that there's that you know there's teams chasing for the final playoff spots. I get it. But something has to give here. Yeah, and it has to give now. Okay, there's no, there, there's nobody within a half game of the final playoff spot right now. No. Okay, the closest I think is three games right now. There's nobody that's like literally one game away from making the playoffs. I see teams making runs. I get it. You you have to. The look ideal at this. thing. You the can ideal add this thing as well. Seven to ten games. Yep. We don't have that. You can add this. You can add this as well. If there were teams within a half game of the number eight spot, you take a page out of Major League Baseball's book. And you institute a, a wild game. card game. Have a playing game. Yep, that's what it is. Or if you want to do it that way, have eight play nine, and then basically where that game goes to play, uh, 
goes to get uh, they can become the snacks for LeBron and, and Giannis in the first round. There we go. There we so go. You don't get, so you don't get that much time to celebrate anyway because you got to go up against King James and King Giannis. <laughs> Basically, you, you have a chance to deal with. You got the Greek freak, and you have King James in the opening round. If you want, if you want to give that ninth seed their chance, yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. But you can have, you can have a get... wild card. You, you can have a wild card game, and the wild card game would be very exciting. But at the same time, it kind of fits. Seeing this past weekend, this past Saturday should have been the Final Four in Atlanta, and I was looking forward to that, seeing how they would configure uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Like that's another conversation for another time. Uh, they, it would be it would be the first four. It would be the first four, but in this case, it would be eight versus nine. You, you know what? Mm-hmm. That that could be a situation they could incorporate. Eight versus nine, but or the if, only or, but the or, only or difference if you, is, or if you really if you really want to have a little bit of fun. Seven versus ten, eight versus nine. The two winners go in the. Basically, you're allowing the the, the one and two seeds to kind of have a bias, kind of sort of. And seven and ten, seven, eight, nine, and ten get one game shot in the playoffs. And a coin it's, flip to is, where it's played. And a coin flip to where it's played. Oh no! Every, everything's in Vegas. Everything's in Vegas. Oh, okay. You okay. just keep you, you keep you keep everybody in one area. There's no reason to be traveling. Right. Right. You know, right. If, if, if we if we if we get a June fifteenth date. Let's say June fifteenth or, or after Father's Day. Yes, that gives the NBA enough time to get the sixteen, eighteen, whatever how many teams we're getting tested. Yes. It gets them to get enough tests involved, get all the results back. Mm-hmm. After that point, you make it mandatory. Nobody leaves the house. Yes. Nobody goes anywhere. Right. You do not. All what you do is you get them all in Vegas. You all test them. After Mother's Day, mm-hmm. you basically send them to Vegas on Mother's Day. Yep. You get them tested once before they leave. Then you have a mandate. Everybody shows up at a certain time. But when the clear, tests are clear, at that point, you test them again, and you keep them all quarantined. Mm-hmm. You have enough hotels in Las Vegas. There's enough hotels. There's enough hotels to keep everybody happy. Yes. Families stay home. Mm-hmm. We play. I know we don't want to play empty arenas. But listen, the players have. I know. I know. Like for example, LeBron doesn't want to play empty arenas. I yep. get it. The yep. crowd gets these guys into it. We all want that. Yes. The other part is, you keep. I hate to say is you keep the media out of this. Yeah. You don't need any more hands on this. Right. You just keep the television partners, and you only have one television partner, whether it be ESPN or it, or, or Turner, which would lead to NBA TV. Yes. You only have one set of. We have one set. And you have a, you have a, one you have two sets of announcers. One that's going to be doing games at Cox. One's going to be doing games at Thomas and Mac. You keep them in their areas. Yes, they're not allowed to be around the public. They're not allowed to leave their hotels. It's basically arena, bus, hotel. That's it. That's it. And then you get this thing done. You said Brian in three to four weeks. Yeah, we, the draft. We, we can push the draft into July. I'm okay with that. We can. You can push. It I'm, to o- I'm okay you with push that. It, you can push the draft back to when the Major League Baseball All Star Game was to take place. You can have that week or that Thursday, and night then you start done. free agency, and then you start free agency right after that, right? And you know, then you allow the players, like said, then you allow the players to rest. Then you get your spring, then you get your summer league games in, and we're on target for October. But at the same time, and then you and you kind of, and you kind of have a bigger, a better scale of what's going on right. in the country when it comes to this pandemic. If we're talking, like I said, you start in June. That's essentially, Brian, what we're talking eight weeks away. Yeah. You know, you, you're giving, you're basically saying, here's what we're going to do. I know this isn't ideal, but what would hurt the most is, as a fan, especially if you're a Lakers fan, you're a Bucks fan, or a Clippers fan, you are this close to a championship. Yes. The Clippers have never seen one. The Bucks haven't seen one since Kareem mm-hmm. and Oscar were together. Yep. Giannis has a time over his head. Yes. If somehow they don't win a championship this year, that Giannis. time starts ticking. Yeah. And the I time think, is ticking. And and I I stick to my convictions. If they if the Bucks do not see a title this season, and I know Giannis is tied to the Bucks for another year, but at the same time, if they don't get it start, done, you got, Giannis is out. You got to see. The thing is, as not even is Giannis being out as a, as as as. Crazy as it sounds, if you're the Bucks, you might have to start thinking, "Do I trade this guy?" Right, and try to get the maximum for him. 
I mean, and I know the Golden State Warriors have the most draft capital of anybody. Yep. Or immediate draft capital. And, and the and the Warriors, you listen, we'll talk about this on an, at another time. The Warriors are licking their chops, okay? The, the Warriors well, have, also the have they also If the ping pong balls fall in their favor and they get that Timberwolves pick. Uh-huh. But the but the Timberwolves pick has to be in the top five. Has to be the uh, has to be number five or number six. Yes, because I think it's top three protected. When it's top three, top five protected. Yes, if they get conveyed that pick this year and they end up with the number one overall pick with a third player, a third a third first round pick, mm-hmm. and you're telling the Bucks you can either take Andrew Wiggins or Draymond Green, which are more likely to be Andrew Wiggins mm-hmm. if you're the Bucks. If you if, you know if you're the Bucks, that's a hard thing to say no to. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, you have a chance to draft Lon- uh, Lon- uh, sorry, uh, Baby Ball with mm-hmm. the first overall pick. Yep. And then you have a chance to get Obi Toppin or James Wiseman. Yep. You fill all your holes. Chris Middleton's still an all-star. You either get Draymond Green or you get um, Andrew Wiggins back. So you have you, you get something in return. You have a third first-round pick. It's You're never going to get value for Giannis. No. There's nothing in the league that you can trade for him to say it's even. Mm-hmm. There's not one player in the league. You can't trade LeBron for him. He's 35, going to 36. Yeah. Anthony Davis is the closest player value-wise, but Anthony Davis has an injury history. Value-wise, it's close. Skill-wise, it's not close. Let's just and be also, real. You got, you, got, you got to factor Anthony Davis' health. Yes, because he has not played, and I've, I've said this quite a few times on this program. You've heard me say it. Anthony Davis has yet to play a full season. Since he's been in the NBA, and this is for, since 2012. I don't, full, I don't care about full season. You gotta give me sixty. You gotta give me seventy five games. And he hasn't 74, played seventy five. And he hasn't played seventy five in a while, in a long time. And that's right. the thing. Like, if Davis plays seventy four, seventy five games, oh, that, I think you could do that deal any day of the week. Mm-hmm. That's the closest you're going to get. I love James Harden. That doesn't make sense. Steph Curry. No. I love Steph Curry, but that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. And, and Steph Curry's not going anywhere. Steph Curry is tied the to only the Bay. Cur- but the only other option, the other obstacle you're looking at, maybe Luka Doncic, if you're looking at the, for a, a long term fit. True. Very true. But I mean, I think I'm telling you, I think Mark Cuban pulled that trigger three days from tomorrow. Oh, you know, you he put would. Giannis and, and Christoph Porzingis together. Whew. Oh boy, dangerous, <laughs> dangerous. He, like, and you look, but, you know, you know, Cuban will pull that trigger blindfolded. He'll pull that trigger blindfolded. You know I, that. You know, so I don't know if he, I don't know if he pulled blindfolded. I think he would. He would. He would think about it. Because Luke is only twenty one, but twenty one years old. True. <laughs> twenty one, and he's, he's only getting better. I mean, you have to yeah. think about it for a second, but yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't pull the trigger. But it's not something you, you, you say yes to immediately. You have to no, think about it. You really do. But that might be the only player you think about. Every really other player in the league, you snatch him up in a second. Yep. But another day, another topic. Yep. Yeah. Another day, no, another day, another another topic. Let's pause for a second. Danny Thompson on the other side of the break. When you all get back.
You're tuned in to the Daily BS. Sports and culture combined into one. Danny Thompson hanging out with me, and, you know, we gave our scenarios, or he gave his scenario, and it's a damn good one on how the NBA can come back. But speaking of NBA, let's how about some how about some current good news? And I'll mention four players. Mm-hmm. Tamika Catchings, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. Let's see, who am I missing? I don't know. Some guy named Kobe Bryant. Over the course of the weekend, all were elected to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. You want to talk about a star studded class? Folks, you cool. got one. You got one. And you know what? And the thing is, we don't even mention Rudy Tomjanovich or Eddie Sutton. No, two of the best coaches. Oh. Eddie Sutton's one of the best, one of the most underrated college coaches of all time. Yes. And Rudy T, you know, <laughs> he, he he was the coach of Clutch City. Yep. You really, you know, you know, and he I mean, was a pretty, he was a pretty good ball player, but even better coach. And like, you know, this Hall of Fame class, but we all knew this class was coming. Yes, um, we did. You know, it. I had I had circled this. I had circled the Hall of Fame date. The second they had changed the rule for Kobe Bryant, right, to be a, to go into the Hall of Fame with those guys before even the passing happened, yeah, that was on my list of things I had to do as a as a as a basketball fan, as a journalist, whatever it had to be, I had to be in Springfield because the one one of the few things I had on my bucket list, I wanted to see and hear what Kobe Bryant Hall of Fame speech would have been. Same, because I could only imagine because we you know, we hear the stories of Kobe now. From different players. Yep. I can only imagine what Kobe would have had to say about being in the Hall of Fame. It would have been about 20. I mean, because Garnett's speech is going to be amazing anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tim Duncan, I, 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 you know, a lot of folks don't get to see Tim Duncan's personality. I've seen it. Yep. He's a very personable guy. Yeah, he he doesn't seem like the person is. It's the same to Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi has a personality that people say behind closed doors isn't what we see. You know, in front of the media, he's just a, he's a different type of guy. Yeah. He's yeah, very yeah. funny, low key. Oh, yeah. But Kobe Bryant, we have seen as the assassin, the black mamba, mm-hmm. the coldest player in the league since Michael Jordan when Period. it comes to. Period. It is. I mean, he, he emulated Michael so much in so many different ways. But, you know, we all, as we saw in Jordan's Hall of Fame speech, Jordan became human for a bit of time. Yeah. He showed his human side. We saw, you know, that's where the crying Jordan meme came from because he cried during the Hall of Fame speech. Yep. I, I mean, Col- it, it, Col- listen, Col- listen, cried Col- <laughs> I thought that MJ improvised that entire speech. I did. Uh, I yeah. really thought if, if you listen to how Michael delivered it through all the emotion, through the multiple standing ovations, the players that he mentioned, and people are saying, oh, he took shots at everybody. Um, listen, he took shots at everybody when he was on the floor, okay? He took shots at everybody when he was on the floor because they challenged him to beat him, and he did, all right? Get over it. At the, at the same time, Michael all, Michael Dennis' crib was take shots. Yeah. Would it be, doesn't matter. Right. When he was on the court, he took shots. Not, right. not players, he took shots with the ball in his hand. Yep. You expecting him to pass with a Hall of Fame speech? Come on now. No. I mean, I, I've been asked so many times, being from Chicago, seeing the man play for 13 years, you know, do you think he was making fun? Look, he made Hall of Fame players look silly with the ball in his hand. You think he wouldn't pass up an opportunity to make him laugh and make him smile on a Hall of Fame speech? And, oh, by the way, folks, like I said, when Mike gave it, when Mike gave his speech, and I gave a review on it some time back, listen to me carefully. He made them laugh during his Hall of Fame speech. He illustrated what kind of person he was and the teammates that he had, and he had everybody standing and cheering for him, a, p- a friend or foe, opponent or not, during those thirty-three minutes. If you could take Michael Jordan's fifteen-year career and encapsulate it into thirty-three minutes. Hall of Fame speech. He did it. He did it. And I, I, I just would love to see Shaq, because I think Shaq's the one that's going to induct him into the Hall of Fame. Do this, you know, this, yeah. this pre-log. I mean, and who, I would, that's the, what I, my two choices, that's what I my two choices to induct Kobe would have been MJ or Shaq. Or both. Or both. I think Shaq, I think Shaq would, I mean, MJ is one thing, but I think Shaq would have been better because there's nobody 
that got Kobe to the level of Kobe without Shaq. True. And I'll say I'll say it like this. The reason I say is that oh yeah, Kobe was this, Kobe was that. Listen, Kobe, Kobe was an eighteen year old rookie. Yep. When he you know, him him and Shaq got together. Mm-hmm. Shaq was the face of the Lakers, but Shaq saw something in him. Yeah, he did. And just like everybody else saw something in Kobe, Shaq was able to let Kobe bring it out of him because to be honest with you, when you have the most dominant big man in basketball, yep. and it makes things easier. Not to say Kobe didn't work, not to say Kobe did not earn everything he did. But if Kobe Bryant would have been a Laker without Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant would have been a Charlotte Hornet, this might not have turned out the same way. True. I'll give you that. I will give you that. It's, because, like, it's the same way, and I'll make this comparison, it's the same way MJ saw everything in Scotty that Shaq saw in Kobe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying Shaq. I'm not saying that Kobe and, and, and Scotty are on the same level because that's, that's not the debate here or no. even the argument here. It's just no. the fact of... Shaq was able to bring out a young Kobe Bryant, and he knew. I guess Shaq, you go back, you listen to Shaq back in the early part of the 2000s, even when he was Lakers. Like, this is the future of the Lakers. Mm-hmm. He's even said it many a times, mm-hmm. and he saw it. And the thing was, the Lakers were un- almost unbeatable because Shaq would beat you up for three quarters, and Kobe would finish you off in the fourth. Yep. And in the 2001 did- World Championship Series, Kobe did. Shaq didn't have to do much, even though he was named Finals MVP. But who put the Sixers away in 2001? Well, who put Philadelphia the, away? The Sixers front, the, the Sixers front office by not by letting Allen yeah. Iverson do what he wants to. But that's another conversation yeah. for another day. Yeah, um, well, that, that's an unfiltered conversation, and we'll have to do that another time. <laughs> but no, I, I think, like I said, the Hall of Fame class it gets no better. Somebody, I, I saw somebody post something over the weekend. Is this the greatest Hall of Fame class of all time? And I'll say, I, I said to this, I think it was Lee, my man, Ellie Brodus, um, over at Three Point Conversion, big shout out to him. Yeah. He's the one I posted it. It is the greatest. I, I, I love Ellie like, Brodus. It, it, he is so, he is so it, funny, it, it, but he it, is so knowledgeable when it comes to hoops. He was like, well, is this the greatest Hall of Fame class? And I said, the real question is, is the Dream Team considered a Hall of Fame class? Because I think when you look at this, like the, the, the talent on the Dream Team's Hall of Fame class is one thing. Now, as far as the individual class itself, it gets no better than this class. Right. It just doesn't get better. Like, you know, there's a reason why Paul Pierce and Dirk Nowitzki held off their their retirement tours. That way, they don't have to be in this class. Um, and, you know, Paul, I can't wait for Dirk's Hall of Fame in the next like, the two years. It's gonna be amazing. Nor can I. Um, you you look at the class itself. I mean. If you look at the there, you have the three the three main actually even three concussions. You have winners everywhere. Yeah, oh, you yeah. know Tamika won in college. Tamika was one of the most winningest winningest women in college basketball history. Mm-hmm. Like not just women, just p- players in general of basketball. Yeah, she was she was part of those Tennessee teams with Shamika Holdsclaw. Yep, and she, not only she held her own, she might have been the best player in those teams too. Yeah, she won a championship in the WNBA. You have champions all over Duncan. Duncan and Kobe were matching ring for ring. Yes, KG got his in in in, in Boston. Mm-hmm. You know, you have defensive player of the years. You have MVPs. You have all NBAs. You have all stars all around the board. So this is arguably, with the exception of the Dream Team, because of course we all know the Dream Team did as a unit. Yes, how they transition basketball, but as a class itself, I can't think. Of, even with the Jordan Hall of Fame class, I don't think nothing comes close to this as far as I star don't think power. So either winning and just all around just greatness yeah like being at springfield when that hall of fame is going to go down it's going to be one of the if if it's not the hardest ticket to get since jordan i think it might be even harder i think it Um, is too i think it's going to be the toughest ticket to get since mj was enshrined and to say that with all of the players that rep and the coaches that represent the Hall of Fame right now, this class right here, I would and, bet and, you anything, it'll be sold out within minutes. And I'm even saying this, both even without if Kobe Bryant would still be on this earth with us today, I think Ticket Man would be just as as hard as this with him living than him being deceased. Yeah, I think that the, the demand will be even. Now, my question for the Hall of Fame is. If Vanessa Bryant is going to speak on Kobe's behalf, which makes sense, 
I don't know if she could make a better speech than she made at the at the at, Kobe Bryant at Memorial his, at his celebration. I don't know. I don't know what more because that was the you talk about Jordan's thirty three minute speech. I think Vanessa was what seventeen, eighteen minutes, eighteen minutes. Can't remember how long it was. It could be yeah. Whatever the time of Vanessa Bryant's speech, that was the most heartfelt. You felt every word that she was saying, and if you, I couldn't watch it without a tear in my eye. Nor could like I. every time I've watched it, a tear has hit my eye. Like it, it's uncontrollable. For some people, it's uncontrollable. Like for me, I cried because as much as you might not like Kobe Bryant on the court, you respected the man, you loved the man off the court. You appreciated him off because, the court, also. Because even if you didn't like him on the court, for those who have daughters, you relate to Kobe because he was a girl dad. Yep. If you're a father, you relate to Kobe because he's a dad. If you're a film lover, the man won a, an Oscar. An Oscar, yes, for um, Dear if, Basketball. If you don't have children love women's basketball, Kobe was the biggest proponent for women's basketball mm-hmm. on the men's side. Yes. He, did, he, he was proponent. I mean, there's something about Kobe that everybody can relate to, whether you did not like him on the court or not. If you loved him on the court, everything on the court was just extra. It was extra. Yeah. So it's just, and the same thing with Kevin Garnett. Like, people love and hate Kevin Garnett. Mm-hmm. People who love Kevin Garnett probably love him since the days of Minnesota. Yep. You know, when he was the kid, when he was the big ticket, when he was the best player in the league, never to make the finals. Right. Because I'll say this to this day, and I, I know that people will argue against me this one. If Sam Cassell does not get hurt in the Western Conference Finals, they, they beat the win, Lakers. They that win year. that series. They win that series. If you have Sam Cassell in 2004, especially with the Timberwolves having home court advantage in that series, they would have beat. The, they would have beat the Lakers. They would have beat the Lakers that year, and would have taken no more than five. They would have clinched it in Minnesota. I believe that I don't in know my if heart. Be, I, I don't know if they would have won that finals that year. I think it was, they lost the, they lost the Pistons that yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, they, they would have lost to the Pistons, but they would have trounced the Lakers in 2004. You have Sam Cassell on that, that series. That he, I compare that. I compare that injury to. I'm going to say this. The, it's up there with the. I'd say Jameer Nelson. Mm-hmm. Um, when the Magic were that, when Jameer Nelson got hurt. When the Magic replaced Ray for Austin with Jameer Nelson in yeah. the finals, yes, you know I I compare it to that. I compare it to even going back to the Cleveland Cavaliers in the finals that year when LeBron lost not only Kevin Love but when he lost Kyrie in Game One, right? Because if Kyrie stayed healthy, that's a completely different series. It is. It is. It is. And you know you might not like LeBron James or not, but LeBron averaged a triple double the entire series because he had nothing. He, he, he had to give a Herculean performance. He had to, and he still couldn't be. He absolutely and he still couldn't to. win that year. You can't win by this. Is, you know, Brian, we always this, this. The NBA is not the '90s NBA where one guy can single handedly carry a franchise. True. You can't. You know, and Kevin Garnett for years put that entire Minnesota team on his back. He did. And one thing Glenn Taylor did was. Kevin was loyal. Mm-hmm. He was loyal to Minnesota. He was loyal to Flip. He was loyal. Mm-hmm. I know him and Glenn Taylor have not spoken, and we. I hope that they can mend that relationship because Flip's no longer with us. Yeah, I hope so. You too. know, Flip Saunders is no longer with us. Glenn Taylor allowed Kevin Garnett to be a champion. He allowed him to go to you know they they, they facilitated the trade for him to go to Boston. Mm-hmm. And what and Kevin sacrificed. Yeah. You know, when people fail to realize that Kevin Garnett was one of the five best players in the league when he went to Boston. Yep, he was. But he went to Boston, and the difference between year one of the Celtics and year one of the Miami Heat was Paul Pierce was the man, Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett basically let Paul lead the team. Mm -hmm. In Miami that first year, Dwayne Wade knew LeBron James was that guy. Yeah. LeBron James did not want to take Wade County from Dwayne Wade mm-hmm. because he respected Dwayne. That was his city. And that's the reason why they didn't win that finals against the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. If they would have, if, if LeBron would have taken the role and basically, you know, I know he's a respect factor being in a different city. If they would have had the conversation earlier and LeBron would have bought into this being your team 
instead of it being Dwayne's team and you guys going back and forth, the Heat would have won those four consecutive championships. I believe it. I think they would have won. I believe it. I believe it's, it. it's not LeBron's fault. I think people people blame LeBron for that series, but I just think the fact of it is the difference with they're all kids. LeBron, it's not like you know you go into a situation in a new city. You're the best player in the, the world, but you're going into a new city. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing the Warriors dealt with with Kevin Durant. Right. The only difference was Kevin. And Steph, they saw it. Steph knew that okay, Kevin is the guy. Yeah, I'm going to be. I'm going to support you. You got to take it. And he did. Kevin didn't. Kevin didn't want that responsibility. Right. Kevin just wanted to be one of the guys. That's a big. And then when they and then when, when, when midway military season, when Steph still with the leader, and Katie was like, "Yeah, I'm the best player, but I'm going to rock behind Steph." That's when they started obliterating everybody. Yep, and, and you bring up and, you bring up that very valid point, and I'm glad you did. You know, because think what you want about the move Kevin Durant made to join Golden State, and I will I I will stick with this until the day I go six feet under, and it's a fact. It's a proven fact. The Warriors didn't call Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant called them. Let me repeat myself. Kevin Durant called them. Because he no, saw something no, special. No, no, no. Remember, let's let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Draymond let's Green, back. Draymond Green, and Kevin Durant were exchanging text messages the entire season. Right, you're right. You're right. And you're absolutely right. Draymond was like, "Yo, whatever's going on in Oklahoma City, we don't have that out here." Thank you for bringing that up. We don't have what you're dealing with. In Oklahoma City, out here. Thank you for bringing. Thank you for bringing that to me. I've been wrong all this time, and I will happily. I will happily admit that. Thank you. Thank you for bring. Thank you for bringing that to me. I really appreciate. Yeah, that. Yeah, because thank you for bringing because that. People because people like you know. I mean, the thing is, but the thing is, it, it only became bad when the Warriors beat the Thunder. That's because if you think about this. Let's just say the Thunder lost the Nuggets that year in the playoffs and Katie went to the Warriors next year. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't have this discussion. This is true. This is true. If it only Warriors, became bad. If, and I'll, I'll repeat your point. And this is Danny's point, folks. It only became bad when the Warriors erased a 3-1 deficit and beat OKC in the West Finals. 2016, I believe that year was. I think the second I knew it was over. I didn't think he was going to Oakland. When... You had game six at home. Yep. And those two go, oh, him and Westbrook go, did not go 0 for 7, 0 for 8 in the fourth quarter, the final six minutes. And Clay Thompson, and went, Clay Thompson went nuts. He raced that lead. <laughs> he, went, he went nuts single handedly. And he raced it. But, but you bring, I'm, I'm so thankful you brought, you, you brought that up. And it was to illustrate the point that Kevin Durant got it. And LeBron got it, I'll, I'll say, a year too late. Because when he did catch think, on, they obliterated ev- – Miami obliterated everybody. The next year, the next year, Miami – because they went, they ran through Oklahoma City like x Yep. Yeah. Okay. It, just, it, it was really simple. Like, it was it, – they got it together. <laughs> That's true. And the thing is, you, you, it is. you can't – I mean, people blame LeBron for that final series. I just think – it's not the fact that – LeBron not being uh, uh, super aggressive. No, you go into a city. You're, you're in Cleveland, and Cleveland is your bubble. Yeah, everything in that city of Cleveland was you. You leave Cleveland to go to Miami Dade County, or otherwise known as Wade, Wade County. County. You go into Wade County, the place where Dwayne Wade made his name by becoming Flash in the finals. Where a, 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 a agent Shaquille O'Neal, he carried them to that final series when against the Dallas Mavericks. Yes, he carried them. He did. Shaq could only get them so far. Wade did what Kobe did. He took over those games and took them At the that rest point, of the way. At that point, that became Dwayne City. Mm-hmm. That city is still to this day. Wade that is County. Dwayne Wade City. Yep. He he took that city from being Dan Marino because that was all Miami was Dan Marino. Yeah. Miami was known for Dan Marino. He didn't win a championship, but Marino was everything the city Miami was encumbered with. Right. The Marlins never had a guy because they kept dismantling their team every time they won. <laughs> so Marlins yeah, didn't have true. that guy. 
the Florida Panthers, they were decent, but everybody knew them from the cup run with the rats. Yeah. <laughs> but that was year, that was years ago. So Miami needed an identity. Miami, Dwayne, when Shaq got there, Shaq put them, and the Heat were good. Yeah. Alonzo Mourning, Tim Harley, they were good, but they weren't finals good. Shaq got there. Shaq basically put a face to the city. Dwayne Wade made his own city. True. And LeBron comes in, and LeBron's like, "Yo, you're my, you're my best, you're my, you're my best friends in the league. I'm coming to help you win. I'm not trying to take your, I'm not trying to take your city." And Dwayne's like, "Yo, I see a six foot eight, two hundred seventy five pound battering ram mm-hmm. that can handle the basketball." And they're going back and forth. It wasn't like they. It wasn't like they were. They were. They were arguing over whose city it was. Yeah. They were arguing with each other, like saying, "You take it. No, you take it. You take it. This is your city. Right. You're LeBron James." They they couldn't get it together. They could after settle. they lost and they sat down. After because Chris Bosh had, had 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 built into that third man role. Mm-hmm. He was Ray Allen. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy with my role. It's like okay, you two are two of the three best players in the league, two top five players in the league. Y'all two got to figure this out. LeBron didn't want to step on Wade's toes. Wade, Wade was like, yo, I'm willing to let toes. you run this show. Right. But when they and figured like, it out, you know, they when they figured it out, they ran over everybody. Yeah. And it's like and you it's, said, at when Kevin figured it out with Steph and to a point, Clay and Draymond, you know, it was on after that. It was on it when when, when Clay when, when, when Steph and KD the of the year. figured it out. Yeah. Adios. It was over. Yeah, when when the, when the thing was, I think in the beginning, I think Kate, I think Steph was like, "Yo, Katie, it's your team," and Katie's like, "No, Steph, this is your city. Like, this is you're the this is your city. I'm here to help you win." And when they figured out that Kevin is just going to be an assassin, Steph is going to do all this. You know, if we need Kevin to do the dirty, the heavy lifting late in games, give him the ball, move out the way. Yep. Steve Kerr figured out, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna manage these guys a certain way. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to get their time to shine. Draymond's going to do everything. Clay's going to have his moments. Steph's going to have his. Katie's going to have his. And once they figured it out for two years, they obliterate everybody. Man. There was nothing nobody could do. Nope. There was nothing nobody <laughs> could do. Oh, man. It is so much fun talking hoops with this man. Danny Thompson joining me. Man, look, I always have fun talking hoops with you. When the new season does start, we gotta make the, we gotta make this a weekly or a bi weekly conversation because there's going to be much to put together, my friend. And plus Oh, I mean I'm we, in the pro- we got plenty of stuff to talk about now. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do, but like I'm I'm inviting you to be my bi weekly guest to talk NBA with me, especially 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 when A the season resumes and B when the new season starts because this is I'm, this is just so much fun. I'd love to have you as my NBA oh, insider. Yeah. Oh, I mean we 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 all you know Brian. We always have fun doing this, you know. And, <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, you know, you, all, you know. With me, it's always you know just let me know the time you and we'll it. make it work. We all we we've always done that. So it's like, you know, always, it's we, always it's always supported. And two, we know the the the, the seventy five greatest players is coming soon. Yes, yes, so, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and that's going to be, and that's and that's a debate among a debate among a debate because we're adding twenty five. <laughs> there's seventy five players of all time. Yep. We're adding twenty five, and the question is, as the original fifty, who are we leaving off? Yeah. Because I don't think we can add twenty five players. No. We because don't. there were guys left off the original fifty <clears throat> that should have been on there. True. True. You know how do, are we going? to be, does you know does guys that played the George Mike era hold the same weight? As they as they did twenty five years later, it's going to be so interesting to see the next twenty five that are added to the all time team. Because if Dominic Wilkins is down this list, I'm throwing it all away anyway. Uh don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started. See, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I grew up a Bulls fan. Don't get me wrong. My original favorite player was Julius Serving, and he always will be. But how can you leave the human highlight film off the list? How can you leave a human highlight film off the list? I mean, it's funny because the the <laughs> I remember the biggest argument back in when they did the, the fifty greatest was Shaquille O'Neal. 
What? It was his fourth year in the league. Fourth, yeah. The fourth yeah, or fifth yeah. year in the league. And yeah. Shaq was on the list. And they were like, how can you put somebody current on this list of the 50 greatest players of all time? And you know what? They turned out fine because Shaq's one of the 10 greatest, ten to 15 greatest players of all time. Mm-hmm. It turned out fine. There were a few, the active, question, there were a few active players that were named part of the well, 50 greatest. No, but, no, but nobody nobody at the at Shaq's age. True. Shaq was like 25. Yes. And he's already and he so, already at that time made such an impact on the league that and he hadn't even won a championship. Right, Shaq hadn't even won one championship yet. And and you're right, it turned out just fine. It turned out just fine. Now with this list, I mean, of course, you know, I mean, yeah, you got guys who are you know Le- Le- LeBron James and those guys, Dwayne Wade. Yep. The question is, how many guys that are currently in their prime is Kawhi Leonard one of the 75 greatest players of all time? How about Steph Curry? How about Clay Thompson? Do you include them? I I, I think I. I know Steph Curry is. Yes. Curry revolutionized basketball. That, I, that's an easy one. I, I I think the Splash Brothers are an easy one. Kawhi Leonard, I say yes. I say yes to I, Kawhi I, Leonard. Is Clay, is Clay Thompson one of the 75 greatest players? I don't know because here's the question. I think I put Giannis in before I put Clay in. Put them both in. Hell, let's just be let's just be put them both in. Why not? We're adding twenty five play because you gotta think you're adding twenty five because Kobe's gotta be added, Kevin Garnett's gotta be added, Tim True. Duncan's gotta be added. That's the first oh, that's, three. Uh, that's easy. Um, that's easy. Okay, Reggie Miller's gotta be Reggie Miller, D- Dominic Wilkins. We're talking yeah. um Steve Nash. Um I'm gonna say Allen Iverson. You know, I don't want to Allen Iverson. Um, I just wish Allen Iverson could have been added to the first fifty because I loved watching the. Um, <laughs> Carmelo, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys consider Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Dwayne Anthony. Wade, yeah, you Carmelo have there's a lot of guys you have to consider on this list. You, people, like, people like, hate and, and Carmelo Anthony, so, and, and there's so many to con- there's so many to consider. There's so many. I mean, to consider. you throw Anthony Davis on this list. I mean, there's a lot of guys on this list in the last twenty five years of basketball. Where are you, Tracy McGrady's on this list? Um, Paul and Tracy Pierce. McGrady's a like, Hall of Famer. Where you, Paul Pierce. Paul, and like Paul Pierce. Said, is, Ray Dirk Allen. Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, like I said, adding 25 players is not going to be easy. No, it's not. I thought it would be. I guess I'm, <laughs> I, I guess I'm wrong. And even my, even my wife slash engineer is laughing at me. She's going, you know it's not going to be easy. <laughs> and it's and really isn't. 25 players in 25 years. That's one player per year. And like you said, you had guys who were never even a minute on the list of the first time. Like Dominique and Dominique, Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller, and, Miller, Reggie Miller, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mitch, Mitch Richmond. Mitch Richmond. People, people get Mitch Richmond. He's a Hall of Famer. There's so many Hall, he's a Hall of Famer. And he's not on the left, 50 grade. That's going to be left off the list. list. Right. There, there sure is. There sure are. You yeah, know this, what I guess it, Yeah. Next time, we are, we're attacking that and see who we put on. Let's hear from you folks. Who would you put on this list? Tweet the show at SITM9 to noon or SNW Digital Media. Got to go to a break. Danny Thompson joining me talking hoops. He'll be my NBA insider from here on out. Thanks a lot, my friend. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Anytime, Mr. Snow. Mr. Snow, I love being on the show. So you <laughs> guys you. be blessed. Thank you. You be blessed also. And give that little one a hug, uh, uh, a tighter hug for Uncle Snowman, all right? I will. I will. Thank you, brother.